Welcome back to video number four in our series, Is the Pill Wrecking Your Gut Health? I'm Dr. Hagmeyer, and in my last video, I talked about birth control pills and leaky gut. I talked about testing for leaky gut. I explained some of the different leaky gut markers that we look at in the blood, not the stool. I showed you several examples of test results from patients who have leaky gut and why most 30, 60, 90, 120 day leaky gut programs that are being sold on, on the internet are not enough to truly correct a leaky gut. And so just a quick reminder here, if you're just tuning into this series, this video series is five or six videos that I've done, again, titled, Is the Pill Wrecking Your Gut? And so far in this video series, we've been talking about how the, the pill causes gut inflammation. I've shown you how the pill causes intestinal permeability, also known as this leaky gut. I've showed you how the pill changes and affects the levels of, of healthy gut flora, changes the diversity, uh, the kinds of bacteria that are populating your microbiome. We call this gut dysbiosis. In today's video, I want to talk about the pill's connection to gastrointestinal motility and how this ultimately leads to bacterial overgrowth and symptoms associated with IBS and SIBO. Those symptoms like bloating and constipation, gas and or diarrhea. Last week, you know, I had a young woman in her, probably in her 20s, uh, email me a question about SIBO. She had recently started taking the pill because her doctor felt that the pill would regulate her cycle and manage many of her symptoms better. Well, within about four weeks of taking the pill, she found herself just barreled over in pain, constant sensation of being bloated, uh, generally just feeling sick and, and unwell. Now, not every woman who starts taking the pill, of course, feel, feels like this. However, the pill itself, when we look at how the pill works in the body, these symptoms really make a lot of sense and it really should make us question how we're looking at, at women who have gastrointestinal problems and the ease of, of, of doctors prescribing the birth control pill. You see, studies show that estrogen does a couple things. It slows down intestinal contractility. So what happens as a result of that, it slows down the transit time of, of food and, uh, and debris moving through our intestinal system, and this allows bacteria to accumulate. You see, from this study here, it was found that 32% of approximately 1,600 women um, who started taking oral contraceptive pills 32% discontinued within six months. 46% had stopped taking the pill due to the side effects. And you know what most of those side effects were outside of abnormal bleeding? Well, if you said gastrointestinal systems, you're absolutely right. Now, here's why this is important and also how this relates to SIBO. You see, estrogen, again, does several very important things. And if you have IBS or you have SIBO, or you suspect you have IBS uh, or SIBO or some other kind of GI disorder, then you're gonna wanna follow along here through today's video. You see, estrogen relaxes smooth muscle contraction and it slows down gastric emptying. And like I mentioned earlier, this can create the perfect environment for the development of SIBO. If food is sitting in the stomach or sitting in the intestines for too long, this becomes the perfect breeding material and the breeding grounds for bacteria to set up shop. If you think about it in this way, think about like a dam, right? If, if we back up a, a moving uh, body of water and water can't circulate, that water becomes stagnant, it becomes like a cesspool, okay? Now let me explain a few more important things here. If you look at this picture, you're gonna see that muscles, specifically smooth muscles, line the sphincter between the esophagus and the stomach. This sphincter is called the LES, or the lower esophageal sphincter. Now the smooth muscle also lines another sphincter that separates the large intestines from the small intestines. This sphincter is called the ileocecal valve. Both of these play vital, vital roles in the development of IBS and the development of SIBO and the development of many other digestive problems. Now here's why this is important and why I show you this illustration. Again, when we slow down or relax these muscles that affect motility of the intestines or the emptying of the stomach contents, we can develop a bacterial or fungal overgrowth or excessive colonization of these bacteria and fungus in the stomach, in the upper part of the small intestines, or in the upper or the lower part of the small intestines. You see, if you're a woman who experiences burping, acid reflux, or even a worsening of your acid reflux after taking the pill, I would start thinking about the, the effects of this pill in terms of how it's relaxing the lower esophageal sphincter, the LES. Now just a side note here, if you're a woman who also experienced acid reflux and lots of burping with any of your pregnancies, that was probably the most common, that was probably a, a common culprit that of course, you know, becomes a consideration. You see, the natural estrogen production from pregnancy was causing the relaxation of that sphincter. 
Now, there's one point to keep in mind here, and this is actually very, very important, okay? SIBO, or bacterial overgrowth in the small intestines, is a secondary condition that develops in the setting of slowed intestinal motility and slowed stomach or gastric emptying, both of which, again, are caused by the pill. So that's so important. This is the very definition of SIBO. This is so important that I, I think it's, it's worth repeating, all right? SIBO is a secondary condition due to slowed intestinal motility and slowed stomach emptying. Several times a week, I have a person who calls and says, I have SIBO, I started a low FODMAP diet, I started taking Rivaximin and Erythromycin, and I'm not any better. Or I felt better, but now I've relapsed and I'm worse. Well, of course you're not any better, right? You have a motility disorder as the primary cause and the overgrowth of bacteria, that SIBO is really the symptom. SIBO is the end result. You're taking an antibiotic to treat the symptom, not the problem. This reminds me a lot of the warnings that pediatricians have been given from the American Academy of Pediatrics when it came to the abuse of, of uh, prescription antibiotics for kids' ear infections, right? And I believe many doctors who treat patients who have SIBO are falling into the same rabbit hole and doing the same exact thing from a treatment perspective. Now, once you and your doctor understands this and starts thinking about SIBO more of a symptom, your chances of a successful treatment for SIBO, I promise you, will increase dramatically. Now, it comes back to the question, why, right? Why do I have SIBO? What caused it? What are some of the other factors that have led to the progression of it? Now, let me explain a few more important things that I, that I think are, are really critical to this topic that we're talking about today. I just talked about how the pill relaxes the lower esophageal sphincter. High levels of estrogen like the ones found in the pill for many women causing the bloating. And this bloating in and of itself also keeps this ileocecal valve open. Remember, we said that estrogen relaxes both the lower esophageal sphincter and the ileocecal valve. Well, Birth control pills, due to the estrogen, also cause bloating, and this bloating in and of itself can cause problems to the ileocecal valve keeping it open, right? So bloating itself keeps the ileocecal valve open, but so does estrogen relaxing the smooth muscle that line the sphincter. Now, let me explain a few more things about the ileocecal valve and why if it stays open, it can be a big problem. So here again is a picture showing you where the ileocecal valve is located. Right? You're going to notice that it's between your large and your small intestines. It's in the lower right quadrant of your abdomen. In fact, if you notice this area being tenderness, uh, being tender when you palpate it, maybe um, you know you, you locate this 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 area and you begin to push on it and it becomes tender, or you have bloating, or you have frequent gas, or you have constipation, or you have diarrhea, any of those symptoms, there's a good chance that you have a problem with your ileocecal valve being stuck open. Now, I want you to think of the ileocecal valve more of like a trap door, right? Normally it's closed, but it opens to allow food to pass from the small intestines into the large intestines, and then it closes. But when it stays open or develops high pressure because of, let's say, constipation, or because of bloating, or because we have slowed intestinal motility, or perhaps because we have slowed gastric emptying, all of these things that the pill can do bacteria begin to colonize in the small intestines where they don't belong. Now, if you're taking the pill or estrogen replacement therapy or an IUD, or in the past you've had fertility shots, anything that has high levels of these synthetic estrogens, this can affect motility, this can affect gastric emptying, this can cause dysbiosis, this can lead to the symptoms of, of bloating and diarrhea and acid reflux. All right, now stay with me here. There is another problem with the pill that I want you to be aware of. And this is the connection to something called the migrating motor complex. Now, this migrating motor complex is also a very important player in IBS and SIBO. The migrating motor complex is like a sweeper. It's a neurological mechanism which causes muscular contractions in the intestines. Now, the nerve cells in the intestines, as well as the smooth muscle in the intestines, have receptors for estradiol, specifically beta estradiol receptors. Well, what this means is that when estrogen or estradiol attaches to these receptors, it's going to slow down motility. Now, if you remember from a past video I did, I talked about the importance of these rhythmic and muscular contractions. And these contractions really sweep bacteria, they sweep debris, they sweep toxins down and out of the intestines, preventing the colonization and bacterial overgrowth that we've been talking about. 
in some individuals, these synthetic hormones not only slow down motility and gastric emptying, they also slow down the functioning of that migrating motor complex, which we talked about. So those are three main ways that estrogen can be traced back to SIBO, IBS, and motility disorders. Now, I think this is an exciting area of research, and I'm sure as time goes on, researchers will begin to further understand the mechanism in even greater detail. I think there's still so much we don't understand, but I believe that for now, I believe it's safe to say, based on what we're seeing here from research and also from patients, that we clearly have a mechanism by which the pill and other forms of unnatural hormones can certainly cause or exacerbate IBS and SIBO. So in wrapping up today's video, I want to leave you with five or six things that I think are important to remember. And these are just, I believe, super important points. So number one is this. Synthetic estrogens found in the pill, in the IUD, fertility shots, estrogen replacement therapy, have been shown to slow down gastric emptying. They relax the ileocecal valve and they relax the lower esophageal sphincter. And they can cause bloating. All three are key players in the development of SIBO. All right? Number two, if you're a woman who is suffering with IBS symptoms and you've been working with a functional medicine doctor and you feel your doctor is just missing something, right? your doctor may need to shift his or her attention to correcting your hormones or addressing the medications that might be hindering gut motility and gastric emptying. Number three, remember that what we said about SIBO. SIBO is a secondary problem due to motility issues. It's a symptom, not a cause. And if your doctor tells you that you have SIBO, maybe they test you for SIBO, you should ask him or her what caused it. And then the very next question you should be asking is, what are we doing to address those different causes, right? There's not a singular cause behind SIBO. There's many, many different causes. And there's lots of videos that I've done that are centered around this topic, all right? And you can go back and you watch those. Point number four, all right? Taking antibiotics for SIBO is like giving antibiotics for ear infections. Don't accept an antibiotic as the answer to your problem. Otherwise, you'll be very disappointed when this overgrowth comes back. All right? Number six, while I didn't talk too much about this, even the so-called low-dose birth control pills still have about 20 times more estrogen contained in those pills than a woman naturally produces on her own. And again, this creates this estrogen-dominant state that many women with hormonal imbalances are often struggling with. And finally, Point, the last point I want to make is if you're a woman who is taking the pill in order to regulate your cycle or because, let's say, you have menopausal symptoms, there are natural ways to correct and address these hormonal imbalances. You may want to consider addressing the root cause of why you have a hormonal imbalance in the first place and work on correcting those problems. And maybe it's estrogen dominance. Maybe it's a liver problem. All right? I don't know. But very often, what you'll find is that by correcting the estrogen dominance, not only will that improve your hormonal imbalance, but it will also begin to contribute and make an improvement in your IBS, SIBO, and other gut health issues. I know that taking the pill sounds like the easy way out when it comes to regulating a cycle and dealing with many of those post-hormonal symptoms, but as we can see, the pill just complicates the integrity of a woman's vaginal and urinary systems and compromises the health of the gut, which we know extend far beyond just the symptoms of IBS. So there you go. Hope you enjoyed today's video on birth control pills and gastrointestinal motility. I hope that you learned a few things, and most importantly, I hope that you'll stay tuned in the video series. In my next video, I'll talk about the pill's effects on gallbladder function. I'll talk more about estrogen dominance and so much more, okay? Also, don't forget, for those of you who hit a brick wall in your chronic health problem, visit my website, and in the upper corner, you're gonna see a tab that says Start Here. When you complete a health questionnaire, within about 10 or 15 minutes, I will email you several recommendations or steps that you can take to start improving your health. All right? So enjoy that. Enjoy my website. And I hope you enjoyed today's video. Take care.